Hello, welcome back. For the third day in a row, demonstrators have taken to the streets of Dhaka in Bangladesh in protest over a series of deadly attacks on secular activists. On Saturday, publisher Faisal Arifin Dipon was killed and a second publisher and two writers seriously injured in another incident. It's the latest in a spate of attacks which started when the targeting of secular bloggers by Islamist militants. <laughs> Assassinations are taking place one after another, but we have not got justice. We've said earlier that if the criminals are not arrested and punished, we will be resolute and take to the streets to face all kinds of evil deeds. Hashim uh, Fazlul Hook is the father of the secular publisher Faisal Arifin Dibon, who was murdered on Saturday. He spoke to Yalda Hakim on the BBC World News a short time ago. He told her his son believed books could change society for the better. With a heavy heart I speak. It is difficult to say something rationally. My son Faisal Arifin Dibon was an excellent person. He was not in politics or any grouping. He was a publisher and he took publication business as a mission. He used to think good books changes society, changes politics, changes culture. For Bangladesh, good publication is necessary. With this mission, he used to work. Now, everyone can see how Brutally, he has been murdered. The father of the uh, latest victim. Well, with me in the studio is Arif Rahman, a secular Bangladeshi blogger who's based here in Britain, uh, and from Dhaka by uh, Mahruk Mohuldin, uh, who's director of the academic publisher University Press. Thank you both for joining us on the programme. Arif, if I can start with you. Five deaths, I think, of uh, bloggers uh, or people involved in this this year alone. Are the police, is the government doing enough to crack down on this? Um, no, I don't think they are. They, although they seem to be uh, active, but the results are uh, in front of us. We have five deaths this year alone, but this killing started two years ago, and even the first killing, no justice, no prosecution has taken place. So, so what are the police doing when it comes to investigating who's behind? Because it's not just an individual killer here. We're talking about mobs, aren't we, of people? Um, they're like assassin groups. Um, but Bangladesh government, um, the, the uh, law and order bodies, I don't think they're, they're incapable. They are more capable, but I don't think they are actually doing their job properly in this case. And they can easily track these people down, and they are not being doing that. And that, that's why uh, they are also government, when it comes to uh, you, you know, protecting the bloggers or the authors or the publishers, government actually doesn't do that. They, on the other hand, they say, do not cross the line. That gives a legitimacy to the killers and give them free reign in a way. Uh, Mahra, do, do you ag agree with that? Because the... The penalty for defamatory uh, publications can be several years in prison as well. Uh, is that part of the problem here? Do you think there, there are mixed messages being given out? Um, yes, I, I think I fully agree with uh, the blogger and, um, you know, that, that the government has the capability of, of stepping in and, uh, and, and we've been you know, experiencing a uh, lack of free speech, uh, space for free speech uh, over the last few years. And, and you've been, um, you know, covering news from, from Dhaka and, and things have only escalated. And, and you know, we don't see, uh, we don't see that, you know, things will, things are getting any better. And uh, I guess, you know, citizens are feeling devalued and, you know, uh, and, and uh, discounted in the process. Um, although the government is saying that they're doing, uh, you know, what is needed to be done in terms of uh, ensuring security, uh, we don't necessarily feel that, you know, enough is being done. 
how intimidating, how frightening is it for somebody like you in your position? Well, um, of course, this recent incident has uh, hit closer to home. But, uh, you know, like I said, that, you know, we have been feeling that that free speech, uh, the progressive spaces are reducing. There is there is lack of space for uh, voice of dissent. Uh, and it's, it's also from, you know, we see increasing intolerance uh, from both sides. So it's not just from the extremists. Uh, we, we really feel that uh, even from the government side or, or the ruling party side, if there was a little bit more uh, space available for people to, you know, have space for critical thinking, uh, for progressive, um, you know, discussions, uh, informed discussions, there would be uh, a way to find out what's the solution, what's the way forward. But uh, we, we, you know, constantly feel that the, that space is reducing and it's, it's really not helping the situation in any way. Uh, Arif, I mean, Bangladesh is nominally a secular country, isn't it, but with a Muslim population of 90%. Yeah. Do you think that the government needs to do more to reinforce that sort of secular foundation to the state? Well, the definition of secularism, in your view, is completely different in Bangladesh. In Bangladesh, Bangladesh government looks at the proportion of uh, religious uh, population and somehow uses that to pamper a specific religion. That is their definition of secularism. Um, it's not that state will not be getting involved with any kind of religious matters. It, it does. It actually subsidizes a lot of religious bodies. And that gives them this power. And also in return, they get um, the support from the religious mob. Uh, we have seen multiple times in political activities. So religion and politics is getting into a very, very nasty collusion. Has it changed the way you blog? We we have been more secure now, as in more, more uh, careful. But what we wanted to say, we continue to say and we will continue to say. Because there is no going back. Because they are pushing ahead and with the help of government. And that's all we can do in our uh, capacity is to, is, to, is to fight back using our, our writings. And that's all we have left. Uh, uh, Matter, will it change the way you do business, the, 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 the people you take on, the sort of pamphlets, the sort of blogs and things that you decide to publish? Um, well, I, I, would, I guess I would speak for, um, you know, publishers in general. And I think, you know, of course, there is a reducing space for uh, uh, publishers who, who publish progressive writers. And, uh, and we know that, you know, it's, it's, it's becoming increasingly difficult for them because even today uh, we heard that one of the publishers, one of our fellow publishers received a threat message saying that uh, you've published a lot of uh, message, uh, writings by atheist writers and you've sinned and therefore be prepared to die. So if, if this is happening, then of course it's a, it's a matter of concern for publishers in terms of what they choose to publish and uh, definitely, you know, that, that that is a, a, you know, goes without saying that it's a matter of concern for anybody who wishes to publish progressive writing. All right, and just a final question from you, Arif. Is there anyone showing any political leadership on this at the moment, actually intervening uh, and appealing for these things publicly to stop? Um, not within Bangladesh, because Bangladesh has this political, uh, I should say, gridlock where you have to speak without, without uh, hurting religious sentiment. But the religious, religious bodies are progressing in such a way that it's, it's crossed over to our secular space a long, long time ago. And when we fight back, they uh, retaliate using killing us. So uh, that's what's happening at the moment. I mean, there is nobody who, with the right mind in the political correctness, will say anything that can uh, you know, jeopardize that state of mind of right. the politicals. Okay, well, uh, Arif Rahman and uh, uh, Mahrouk Mahoudin, thank you both uh, very much indeed for joining us here on uh,